West Hill Middle is the largest middle school in East Baton Rouge Parish. We're located right here in the heart of Mid-City, and we love being part of the close-knit Mid-City community. We currently serve about 1,150 students who come to us from all parts of the parish. We have about seven different academic programs that cater to different students from around our parish. We have a uh, program for academically gifted students. We have our world language magnet immersion program. We have a program for students who are in talented visual and performing arts. We also have a traditional program that serves a large geographic area of our city and those students come to us from there. One of the things that we found that works better is to, instead of downplaying our diversity, is to, is to emphasize it and uh, to celebrate our differences and to celebrate the different talents, uh, talents of different students. We emphasize preparing students not only for high school, but for the real world that they're going to face when they leave our school and when they leave high school, they'll face that throughout their lives. To prepare them for that, it means teaching them the basics of how to read and how to write, of course, but it also means preparing them and teaching them how to think. And that's what we focus on in a lot of those classes, teaching them how to interact with their world, showing them and teaching them skills, real world skills that they'll be able to take out of the classroom and move into some careers. Uh, dynasty Han, Dynasty Shang, Dynasty uh, Qi. Uh, well, the Magnet World Language Immersion Program is one of the jewels on our campus. It's an award-winning program. Um, it's one of the only two middle schools. We are at West Hill is one of the only two middle schools in the state that are certified as a world language school. We also won the Magnet Schools of America Magnet School of Distinction Award in 2013, and we were named the number one Spanish immersion school in the United States by the Spanish Embassy. So that's a program that we're very, very proud of. And it's so important to have that here on our campus because we can offer some things, because of the size of our school, we can offer some things that maybe some smaller schools can't offer. We can offer these students a variety of electives so that they can have their magnet world immersion experience, but also have some experience in some of the other things that we offer, some of the higher level maths and some of the gifted self-contained classes. And we, we do have students who, who kind of touch both of those programs and who can receive gifted services and get the, the magnet immersion services. ¿Qué lleva ella en la cabeza? ¿Qué es eso que lleva en la cabeza, Colin? Yo here at Westdale, we offer three different immersion tracks to our students, French, Spanish, and Heritage. The Heritage kids are those students who speak Spanish at home. All of our students participate in classes where they are learning the, practicing the second languages in an authentic experience so that there, it's a content integrated approach so that their science, their social, social studies, their literature, and their world language electives are all in the French or the Spanish taught by foreign associate teachers from around the world. Rencontrer l'ouvert, Isabella. Yeah. Voilà. Alors, fécondation. Isabella, tu continues. We're hoping that our students are going to use their languages, yeah. that perhaps they will go to universities yeah. in oui. France or in Spain or in around the world to universities that use those languages. And we also hope that we're preparing them for the job market here at home or around the world. Because as we progress in America over the next 25 years, I think it's going to become more and more necessary to have a second language. In Europe, everyone has two or three or four languages. America's just catching up to that. We're even looking at down the road adding the Mandarin language here at Westdale as they're starting it in kindergarten now at BR Flame 2. They have to stay for one hour and a half with a French teacher in science, in social studies, so they have to write in French, to read in French. Uh, I think more than in an elementary school where they focus more on math and ELA. So they will improve for sure because they are going to do that for three years. So in eighth grade, they will have a very good level in reading and, and uh, writing. It's much harder. This a bigger challenge because there are different words in uh, French and English, but it's also really easy if you get used to it. Better chance of getting into French in high school and 
that could allow us to advance more in our subjects if we continue them in French. We are doing social studies in Spanish, and this is really important because we are not just learning like about Spain, but we're also learning about Mesopotamia, Egypt, India, China, and it's just basically their culture in another language. Our robotics class basically gives students an opportunity to learn problem solving skills, uh, obviously work with technology. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, kids, they, they might know the math, they might know the English, but the opportunity to actually build something, get a problem, uh, visualize the solution, and then build an object to actually solve that problem is something that they may not get an, a, you know, an opportunity to do in a lot of their classes. This is the class for it. Uh, we start the year talking about you know, basic construction ideas, uh, teamwork, project management, that kind of thing, and then uh, teach them the programming, how to use the programming language, and, uh, and then get to work solving problems, building robots to solve problems. To me, robotics is today where computers were, you know, 40, 50 years ago. I mean, these kids are going to have robots in their lives. They're going to be working with them. They're going to be in their homes. They're going to be in their businesses. The, the, these kids today are getting an opportunity to sort of get in on the ground floor of a technology that I personally believe is just going to change the world. Uh, uh, revolutionize medicine, business, science, you name it. It's more hands-on and it's actually easier to learn and it's more fun this way and so you attain more information, like more of what you learn. At Westdale, all the teachers are really good. They teach according to their extracurricular plan and they would put in some fun stuff just to keep the students entertained while they're doing work. It's been really good. Like the teachers are very helpful and the students like they're in like the gifted program, they're all there to learn and so they all want to be there. So it's been really good here. A great school. Uh, love it. Gr love the kids. Um, really uh, top-notch faculty. I love who I work with. Uh, we draw kids from all over Baton Rouge. Uh, they're a pleasure to teach. Um, obviously, you know, they, they come with sometimes their own challenges, but we work hard to make sure that, that uh, we meet their needs wherever they're at. Um, but I, it's a joy. I tell you, I come to work every day and love what I do. I really And an opportunity to teach a class like this is just, I mean, you know, it's once in a lifetime. I really love it. I really do. Today you're going to be working evidence number two. Um, evidence number two, I want you to keep in mind that whoever uh, we are looking for today, they have a motivation of money because... Um, this is seventh grade math, the great scholars, which is somewhere between being gifted and traditional math. Um, today we're working on a project where it's CSI math. They are required to solve a crime in five stages. The five stages, at each stage there's some type of evidence in which we do um, a math calculation to rule out X number of suspects. Uh, yesterday's assignment they had to analyze a poison and the ratio of the chemicals within the poison. Once they figured out whose home did not contain that deadly combination, they were able to rule out two to three suspects. Today their focus is using financial records, bank accounts, but each bank account is not given directly. They have to figure out what percent of this number leads to a value in my bank account based on some other suspects account. What I've noticed with our kids, they're disconnected from the world. Everything for them is so immediate that they don't have to do any more work. Something has done it for them. This allows them to see how us as adults actually use this in real world. Um, they're able to see and understand that I am able to take this material, understand what my parents go through. The practical application for me um, allows them to see that it's, it is worth it. It does matter and it does come into play somewhere in their lives. A lot of times kids will tell us that, okay, well, what am I going to eat this for? Why, why I need to do it. And this allows them to be able to see it. And more importantly, it gives them to say, hey, you know, I'm interested in this. I might actually want a career in this particular thing or something of this type. We're finding out how much money that each suspect has based on suspect one. It's mostly word problems, but it's used on stuff that you're probably going to use. Um, just recently we used it, but we were using it in money. So we were doing tax. Um, we were doing tax, sales tax, interest, um, discounts. And um, so that was better because it shows, it, it was really good because it shows how you're going to um, use all this when you grow up and how you're going to pay for stuff. Can you verify where Sir Macbeth was on the night of the murder? Yes, we were both asleep in our chamber. No further questions, Your Honor.
Well, we have been reading several pieces of literature, abridged versions, of course. This is a gifted class. We've read Macbeth, Hamlet, and The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. And the kids uh, are doing a mini mock trial, and they actually took the information and um, created a trial by jury, and it helps them to interact with the text and uh, actually come up with things that the characters may say to defend themselves, and it really gives them a chance to interact with uh, the greater part of the literature. It relates to writing skills in the way that the kids actually write their own closing and opening statements. They had to come up with witness affidavits, and they learn legalese, and also with uh, speaking skills, they actually have to talk in front of a group as you witness, and they actually have to actually collaborate and work together. We basically looked at the play from both sides, and we also added other information to make it into a trial, being that the play itself could not just be a trial. The teachers are great, and uh, Ms. Lava is really fun. Um, we have really good teachers here at Westdale. Um, I'm in the immersion for, six, um, for science and social studies, as well as French, so um, we have teachers that actually come from countries that have French as the, um, their first language. We also have Spanish immersion that have um, teachers that are um, from Spain or um, Latin America. So um, the teachers are, very, um, are really good. They always um, incorporate fun, um, fun activities as well as um, the core stuff we need to learn. I feel like I am better able to identify with the case being that I was able to put it on trial. So I was able to understand the story and what actually happened at a deeper level. The atmosphere here is highly academic. Uh, I moved here from Los Angeles, and uh, I was surprised by the high level of education here. Uh, the gifted program is exceptional, bar none. Uh, we have full immersion classes. A lot of my students actually are in immersion, and they speak several different languages. Uh, the colleagues are helpful. Uh, we work well together, and uh, we collaborate on lessons, mm -hmm. uh, not only along with the gifted program, but also in um, and learning groups with other uh, grade levels. And so it's just been an aw awesome experience for me to be here. On your table, you will find a plastic bag of materials that I am passing out now. This class, um, as I stated, is based on the tenets of Destination Imagination. And Destination Imagination is a global-wide volunteer-type organization worldwide. And through this school, we are able to bring it in as a creative thinking class. And it's high level STEM activities that gets them cooperatively um, working together, sharing ideas. Um, they also use the foundations of the scientific method. Through each challenge, they have to work together to solve those tasks using the scientific method, mathematical equations sometimes. Um, we've used scales, ratios in a lot of our um, examples of the paper tower mm -hmm. challenges and things like that. And it has long reaching goals too, um, as far as communication together as a teamwork. Um, as you know, our jobs need that in today's society. Um, it teaches them how to work together as a team, how to communicate and effectively problem solve as a team. So it has long reaching goals for later on as they go through high school, college, and then in, onto their career. Today you witness them preparing for their Christmas program. Um, my company, Movements in Motion Dance Studio, will be coming in and doing a full-on Christmas program for the school, as well as I teach at three schools. So all three schools will be combined for one big Christmas program on December 11th. Um, you also witness them doing what we call Footloose, and that was something fun and active that I did when I was in school, so of course I wanted to bring that in here. Performing arts is great to have in schools. It not only teaches the kids the art form, but it also gives them self-esteem, etiquette, 
um, job readiness because when you have a craft and you have an art, you put your all into it. So it gets them ready for when they go out into getting a career, that they put their all into what they're doing. But it's not only about just the art, it's about all the characteristics to make them successful in life. It does give them that break away from, I guess, quote unquote, their core subjects. Um, and we do use the arts to kind of be that mediator, that fun subject that still instills those core subjects, math, science, uh, social studies within the art. Um, but it's like a breath of fresh air when they come and they're able to unwind from all the notes and tests that they're doing in class. I love teaching here at Westdale. It's just awesome that they've embraced the arts the way they have. Um, all of the students enjoy it. As you can see when you're in here, my class are packed from wall to wall. I've had to turn students away because the classrooms are just, it can't hold enough students. So it's great that they embrace them. Um, next year we plan to do even bigger and better with the arts and I'm all with Mr. Kubian for that. That water warm or really cold? I think it's very important because it teaches them a kind of a different way of seeing th seeing the world, um, kind of problem solving. You know, there's not always the one way to solve a problem. There's many different ways, and you have to kind of be creative when you when you construct those um, solutions. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really good for that. So what is going on in this room now? Uh, right now, they are working on sculptures. They are kind of deciding what they want to make, and then we discuss, you know, um, how big they want to make it, what's the best material to use for that. So they're kind of having a lot of options. Uh, I basically explained, you know, uh, the many different types of sculpture you could have, and we, we went through the, the definitions of those types of things, and then um, I let them choose. And so they're kind of getting a broad sense of all types of sculpture, and then they get to make their decisions on what they want to do. I really like working here, um, especially this year when all the um, extra cur curricular activities we've been doing this year. Uh, the students love it. Um, the homecoming week and uh, the you know the dances that they get to have, um, the free dress days they they love to do. I, I they're just so excited to come to school now. You know, mm -hmm. having this fun stuff they get to do as well as you know the curriculum side it makes it makes it fun makes learning fun the students you know sometimes they just they don't want to do you know the the hard stuff so it's glad I'm glad they have all the the extracurriculars that they want to come to school and so you know it makes them want to to be here all that I mean robotics who gets to do that in middle school that's amazing and that I mean these kids love art mm -hmm. as you can see, I can see. so um, it just makes you know education more fun the sculpture I'm doing is of uh, french fries, like McDonald's fries. So right now I'm plastering the box, and then after I plaster the box, I'm doing the fries and put them on the inside. And it's just, I thought it would be something fun to do. And you know how, like, I think one of my inspirations as an artist would be Andy Warhol. Yeah. And one of my favorite quotes of his is that art is anything you want it to be, not what somebody else says it should be. And I agree with him on that because art is in the, eye, in the eye of the beholder. And art to me is like just another way to express myself without being shy or anything because like sometimes you get scared of something. When I'm doing art, it's like I'm in another world and I could do me and I know I'm doing it well. Like if I'm riding through town or whatever and I pass by a church, you see stained glass. Mm -hmm and that's art like you look at different shapes and colors like i'll take time and like look at how, when like when leaves change you can see the color changing from the green and the red and the orange and i'll look at all that westdale's academics and sports is a lot and because i play basketball and i run track for the school and there i think our sports team is really good mm -hmm. and academic wise westdale is a really good school like the teachers actually, they take time with us and make sure that we know, like, we know what we're learning mm -hmm. and not just, like, going through a lesson. They're, they're take, they take their time to, like, tell us what's going on and explain it to us in depth. Art is very, very important to me. Um, what I'm sculpting is a character from an old movie called The NeverEnding Story, which is one of my favorite movies. Um, I don't know. I, at first, I did not know what to sculpt, but I, we were watching the movie at the time, and I thought, why not? So I decided to sculpt that. I really like to express myself in ways, I don't know, very visually. I, 
I'm not quite sure, really. But um, mm -hmm. I've been doing art and being into art practically my entire life. I teach basic career readiness, fashion and textiles, and family consumer sciences. I think as an elective, it gives them an opportunity to explore maybe some other interests that, um, that they haven't had an opportunity to do so far in middle school. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives them a creative outlet, which is, you know, a nice break during their, uh, lear during their day of learning. In fashion, um, you know, when we are drawing the fashion figure, there are lots of measurements that have to do with math. When we're cutting fabric, math again. Um, when we are, you know, using, but we haven't gotten to this point yet, but using fabrics, we have to know about the, um, the um, science behind the textiles and making sure that, you know, when we wash a textile, is it going to shrink? Or when we put it in the dryer, is it going to shrink? Um, and that's, you know, that's all science right there. It gives them a creative outlet um, that they don't always get in, you know, like a math class or an English class. But um, this, allow this class allows them to express themselves, mm -hmm. um, whereas maybe in another class they wouldn't really be able to do that, their creative side. Um, it gives them an opportunity to use their math skills, their science skills, but also their creative skills, their, um, you know, putting colors together and textures together. Um, and it just... Um, it gives them something to look forward to and to want to come to school and um, participate. And of course, all my um, students in this class are teacher recommended. They are chosen for this course so they know that they have to have good behavior, good grades, and good attendance in their other classes. When we look at fashion, we think, oh, fashion, it's on TV, it's on magazines, the superstars wear it. Um, but in this class, we learn about the structure of the design, creating the design, um, you know, all the things that go behind actually creating a piece of clothing. Um, as well as looking at the history of fashion and where they come from and how the trends repeat themselves through the years. Um, and also, um, you know, we look at designers, past designers that have had a huge influence in fashion and also um, today's designers. And then we look at, um, you know, who are going to be the designers of tomorrow. And hopefully, you know, maybe that will be one of our students. Oh, Jesus. Um, right now, my kids are working on reading comprehension and um, their writing skills. Mm -hmm. We have kids who are on the computers that are there. They are working on a the unit one assessment mm -hmm. from our textbook. And if they pass it, then they'll, they'll be out of tutoring. That means that they learned everything that I needed them to learn to be caught up with the rest of the students. It's another um, level of intervention so that I can help them in a smaller class period mm -hmm. to um, succeed in my class. A lot of my kids have issues with writing, so and I'm a firm believer if they can't write they can't read because they read the way they write the way they're reading or they write the way they're texting mm -hmm. so that's something that we are <laughs> fighting with because I get uh, okay. the the text lingo in my in the writing so I'm trying to break that my kids um, for their reading levels have jumped at least 70 points and that is they went from a let's just say a third or fourth grade reading level mm -hmm. to a fifth grade reading reading level so they, they've been working really, really hard. And their writing has changed from August till now. I hammer it. We do the race strategy with everything. We restate, we answer, we cite, we explain with every single thing that we read and write. We're excited here at Westdale because there's a huge literacy push across the curriculum. And the way we're trying to be essential to education in the library is we're focusing on that first 30 minutes of the ELA classroom. And we're talking about reading and writing for comprehension. So we're really trying to instill um, purpose for that silent sustained reading so that when the kids sit down, what is that supposed to look like at the end? Um, after each chapter, we've been getting the kids to write so that they can create study guides because when they read novels, sometimes especially middle school kids get fatigued. Mm -hmm. And so when we're taking ACT, when we're taking um, standardized tests, we want to train them for the marathon. And reading is, the, is essential to training them for the marathons of life and to get them to be lifelong readers. If you look around, um, we have students that are walking around with reading logs. So immediately when they walk through the library doors, I can look and see what level they're reading on, um, what they've been interested on when they take um, accelerated reader tests, if they've been successful. If they've been successful, I can go to another level. We might up the ante a little bit and move, move to a book that's a little harder. If they haven't been successful, we'll step back and maybe use something that's shorter, maybe something that um, 
is on a lower level. So we want to layer that success and, and really work with the individual child. And if you look around and see the different reading logs, that's step one into knowing the child as an individual. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. This is a health education group that we are holding in our clinic. And um, the main discussion is about peer relationships and anger management. And today we're going to talk about bullying. We are Westdale Middle School Health Clinic. And what we do here is we provide um, medical and mental health integrated services for all the students at the school. We do different things because we try to focus a lot on preventive health. So one of the big things we do, all sixth graders are required to get shots when they turn 11. So we try to make sure that all the children get their needed vaccines and we can actually give them here at school if the parents give permission. Um, as far as sick kids go, we, um, you know, you see lots of, you know, colds and allergies and sniffles and headaches and injuries from when they're outside with PE, um, just different things like that. So we want to try to keep kids healthy so they can stay in school. So if they're just coming in for minor things and we can give them some medication to make them feel better, then they can stay at school. So obviously they're going to learn more being at school than um, if we send them home. Right now, they're coming up with the different ideas for the following few months. We had the few ideas they were coming up with were a walk against violence for all the school, um, different charity drives. Right now, we're starting a Braveheart Change Fund, and each class is donating change in the, during the lunchroom. And whatever class gets uh, donates the most change towards Braveheart uh, Children's Fund mm -hmm. wins uh, an extra big break, an extra hour long big break where they can you know, enjoy themselves, have snacks, and so it's a way just to you know increase community involvement. And it's completely student run. The kids can, uh, ran for elections, and these are the uh, the winners of the elections. They come in and they just come up with different ideas to improve the school and do community outreach. I thought about other schools, but I like Westdale because it has different programs, and you could either be advanced or you could be somewhere in between, or you could be, you know, traditional. And then um, Westdale is just a fun and family place has a lot of, of um, generous people here. The first thing I did when I found out that I was on the student council, I said, okay, I know you have a lot of things to tell me and like you want me to say it at these meetings, so whatever it is, just tell me. Like, because I want to make sure that I wasn't just doing this for me, but for everyone else. And then I always like to be a leader. So that's kind of what this feels like. At Westdale, we take all the kids, we have like nine different programs here, and we divide the kids up, it's 30 to 35 kids in each class. We have seven PE teachers, and we teach health and physical education all year long. What is the importance of the physical education part of a student's normal day here? Well, it's called teaching them how to be healthy for life. So when you teach physical education, you just don't teach the sports. They need to understand the court marking, the history, the background, where it derived from. And then when you go to a football game with your brother or a soccer game with your sister, you need to be able to identify and understand what's going on without be saying, where's offense, where's defense? So we teach the wholeness in physical education here at Westdale Middle School. We hadn't lost a game in five years. It, they say 50 and 0, but if you count this year, it's like 68 and 0. Mm -hmm. We haven't lost 68 games in five years. I call it PMA, a positive mental attitude. If you believe you can, and you see you can, you can achieve you can. And here at Westdale, under my leadership, I also, the first thing I do is teach self-confidence. I want a child to believe no matter what, no matter how tall a person is, how short they are. If you believe you're the best volleyball player that ever hit the courts of Westdale Middle School, then that's how you're going to play. Middle school is a big transition year for everyone because they're going from a, a little kid to what they think as an adult when they get to high school. So we do have some, you know, we have those growing pains in middle school and we have to, just like we teach them the real life skills, we're not only talking about um, life skills in the classroom. We also spend a lot of time teaching them life skills outside of the classroom. We're talking about teaching them responsibility. We teach them respect. We teach them humility. We teach them a lot of things that we feel like are successful life skills, not only in the classroom but outside of it too.